This is a Healy Shaw model that represents groundwater flow under a dam. A Healy Shaw model is two plates with a small spacing between them that is filled with viscous liquid. Flow lines in a Healy Shaw model follow the same principles as flow lines in a homogeneous porous medium such as sand. The configuration shown here is the same as is used in one of the ebook videos that illustrates how to sketch a flow net. You may want to view that video as well. The model includes a no-flow boundary on both sides and the bottom, as well as along the surfaces of the dam. There is a constant head boundary in the reservoir on the left at the upgradient side of the dam, and a constant head boundary in the reservoir on the right on the downgradient side. The flow line closest to the dam would have the shortest path length and the highest velocity if the path length was not increased by designing a wide dam base with a cutoff wall of low permeability protruding downward on the left side of the dam. Notice that the dye trace closest to the dam is not only not the fastest flow path, but is much slower than the dye traces along the central flow lines. If the dam did not have the wide, deep base, the upward velocity near the toe of the right side of the dam could become so large that the groundwater outflow could lift the soil particles and cause the dam to fail. Longer flow paths decrease flow velocity, which improves the stability of the dam's foundation. For this reason, construction engineers design dams that result in longer flow paths. Dye traces along the deepest flow paths have not reached the lower reservoir yet because their paths are long, thus the gradient is low, so the velocity is slow. It will take quite a bit more time for those traces to reach the lower reservoir.